underquoting real estate agents. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I've got my Stein of coffee and I thought we'd have a look at this article from the ABC. It's to do with real estate agents apparently underquoting properties. You know, so they're doing better, better than the market or to get more buyers in. Now, this is to do with the persuasion and marketing technique of anchoring. So when the agent comes in, they will anchor you at a lowball price. They will get more people in, you know, so it'll set your expectations. But then if they manage to get above that, they're doing even better. So, you know, they're, they're getting rave reviews, rave reviews, or they could just be buggering it up. It's all just smoke and mirrors. What do you think, guys? Let me know your opinion in the comments. So let's have a look. Are real estate agents underquoting or beating expectations in a rising property market? So it's a problem that's long been a feature of rising property markets. Too many buyers battling for too few homes in the inner suburbs of Sydney and Melbourne. Well, I thought it's kind of a, a new occurrence at the moment. Supply is down. ABC News did a call out on social media asking if people were being underquoted for properties in Sydney and Melbourne. A number of people wrote in saying they thought properties had been underquoted because they sold 100 to 200,000 above the advertised price. Could this just be a higher quartile and money coming in, particularly from Hong Kong and other countries, that's pushing up that sector? of a society and the media is just leaping on it so people are seeing that consuming it and feeding it back but the real estate agents who sold the property said the price advertised was within the reserve price of the vendors the agents said the fact that property ended up going for well above what they expected at auction was not underquoting, but the consequence of a hot property market oh there you go guys we're in a hot property market because we're hearing about these properties that are going but well above reserve. According to CoreLogic, Australian home prices rose an average of 1.7% in November. Sydney led the gains, lifting 2.7% for the month. Real Estate Institute of Australia President Adrian Kelly said the fact homes are selling for more than their advertised price is an issue of limited supply and growing demand. And perhaps, perhaps, the fact that our cash rate is at the lowest level it has ever been. So interest rates are just, you know, money's very cheap to borrow right now. Very cheap to borrow. The problem we've got is we've got rising markets, particularly in Melbourne and Sydney, specifically due to low volumes, he said. So they're pinning it on low volumes. But I can certainly understand the frustration because you put time and money getting yourself ready for auctions. And because of low volumes, the prices go above reserve. Well, these... <laughs> Okay, auction clearance rates that are always advertised are incorrect. We've seen that. I've discussed it in previous videos. We've actually got the hard data that proves that it's incorrect. There's an underreporting of past in auctions. Now, I, I, literally, there's a house across the road from mine that was at auction and it wasn't advertised. That The result of the auction wasn't advertised, just appeared for sale again. A colleague I know, his house was passed in. It happens more and more than we realize. The media jumps onto these few, you know, hyped up examples of insane, insane above reserve. And people buy into it. People buy into it. But is that, a, is that an example of reality? We'll have to see. State laws against underquoting include hefty fines. I mean, here we go. This, this is more... This is more, I would say, you know, security theater or safety theater or regulation theater. It's where the government creates these laws to give you well, the perception, and I'd say false perception, that everything's safe and everything's fair. In New South Wales, agents face fines of up to $22,000 for failing to comply with the law and may also lose their commission and fees earned through the sale of an underquoted property. Yeah, but how are you ever going to ever going to prove that unless you had a letter where they were saying oh we're going to underquote this property ha 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 i bet you that's what you'd need 
And under underquoting laws introduced in Victoria in May 2017, agents that provide unreasonable estimates risk penalties of more than $33,000 and loss of their sales commission. In the year to September, New South Wales Fair Trading conducted 12 compliance operations of real estate agents and issued almost $400,000 in fines. Yes, but has it got, is that got to do with underquoting? I bet you it's a whole lot of other issues, just dealing with my own experiences with real estate. And during the 2018-19 financial crisis, Consumer Affairs Victoria issued 39 infringements for underquoting with almost 200,000. Oh, there you go. There you go. Now let, let's look at what was happening in that area. Let's look at what was happening in that area. And I'll just find some data I want to bring up here to show you. Look at the foreign investment in our property sector here. 2018-19. Let's just dove right down. Dove right down after that. So maybe we'll pe people were responding to that or getting a little bit worried. New South Wales Fair Trading spokeswoman said underquoting occurred when a real estate agent either verbally advertised or advertised a property for a price that is less than the estimated selling price in the agency agreement they have with the seller. Okay. Okay. So that, that's very specific. Very specific. Um, wouldn't the wouldn't the buyer nab them for that? Maybe you'd report them for that? It is not considered underquoting when a property sells for a price more than what an agent estimated in the selling agency's agreement, New South Wales Fair Trading spokeswoman said. So exactly what I said, guys. They need it in writing. They need written evidence. They need written evidence. They need examples of where you've advertised it or evidence where you've advertised it differently to what the contract says. That's what they're doing. This is a breach of a contract. So they're misrepresenting. They're, they're, do they're doing the dodge to their client, which I, I well... I'm not really surprised about <laughs> with real estate agents. I know I've got friends that are agents, great people, but other ones that are just, just pretty dodge, to be honest. A spokeswoman for the Victorian Department of Justice and Community Safety also told prospective buyers to be aware that comparing the initial advertised price with the sale price was not necessarily evidence of underquoting. Yeah, exactly. She said examples of underquoting included when a salesperson advertised or advised a property for sale at a price less than the seller's asking price to auction reserve price, told a prospective buyer a price less than the agent's estimate for the selling price, or gave a price less than the price the seller had already rejected. Mr. Kelly doesn't think stronger penalties for underquoting will make a difference. Yeah, I mean, this isn't... It won't. He says there are cases of individual agents getting record of fines amounting to about $1 million for deliberate underquoting. These are just terrible agents. Just, you know, recorded on their Google review. Agents have well and truly been put on notice about underquoting, Mr. Kelly said. Well, yeah, they get fired. I mean, I guess maybe I'm just expecting too much. Competing in Sydney's rising property market. So for Alexandra Alexwood, 42, and her husband, Jamie, 34, who have been looking to buy their first home in Inner West Sydney since July, the competition for Sydney properties has been overwhelming. She said her budget was around the $800,000 mark. But the houses they searched for in that range constantly sold for well above that price. Well, maybe you guys need to do a green change. She gave the example of a two-bedroom apartment in Ashfield. It ended up selling at auction 252000 above the initial price advertised. Well, that's not well, what was the price in their contract, guys. That's the, that's the whole point. That may not be underquoting. When the property was first listed on realestate.com and domain.com, the price guide was at 680 she said. She said the first day she went to inspect the property, there were many prospective buyers, and that day she was giving a verbal price guide of 680 to 7 48. She then went to her conveyancer to get the ball rolling. A few days prior to auction, in late November, she received an email from the agent with a price guide of 720 to 750. She said a similar property in the same block that was not renovated sold in 2016 for 810. Yes, because of this. This is why we had a, a huge amount of property in 2016. You know, 15 to 16, it was the peak. Yeah, guys, this isn't rocket science. And, oh, we went back to the holiday uh, holiday article. 
So, come auction day, Miss uh, Elwood said her budget was a good amount over 750, and we didn't even get a chance to bid. If the property went over our bid, <laughs> the property went over our bid in 15 seconds. It sold for 932. A lot of people were gobsmacked by what had happened. This is why. Why are people going to buy houses at auction? It's so emotional. So emotional. You can't. Seems nuts. Just seems nuts. Auction prices are often based on pure emotion. Oh, well, there you go. Exactly. And an ABC News crew were there to film the action. The auction. Well, there you go. She never made a complaint to New South Wales Fair Trading that this was undercutting. Well, it probably wasn't. But the little I do understand about the real estate game is not technically underquoting if they did not give a different price guide to the vendors. Yes. The agent's argument is that two people really loved it, and that's what auctions are. They're pure emotion. She said, exactly, that's why it's the worst way to buy a property. Probably the best way to sell it, worst way to buy it. But she still believes, given the interest that there was in this property, there was an opportunity for the agent to revise the price guide to be more forthcoming with information to the prospective buyers. The one thing that I've learned, well, no, well, you can understand why the agent wants more people at the auction. The one thing that I've learned from all of this is that agents are not on the side of the buyer. Um, okay. <laughs> is, that, is that a revelation? And they're there to get as much as they can for the vendor. Wow. I mean, how can you be 42 and be this naive? Guys, please, can, can you let, explain to me? Someone, let me know. Maybe, maybe this is most misquoting. She needs to get a buyer's agent then if she wants someone to deal with her. Buying a home is already a scary thing for first-term buyers, and this makes it so much more intimidating. Yeah. We already live in one of the most unaffordable cities in the world, and then this happens. Uh, Cobden and Horson's David Carosa said this particular sale was an anomaly. When you look at comparable sales in Ashfield, most were in the 700 to 800 range, he said. Nevertheless, he said this was not an example of underquoting, but of the Sydney property market picking up. He said the indicators to would-be buyers pre-sale were 680 to 740, not 8 range in sync with what the owner had been told. He said underquoting was when you told the owner one figure and the buyer another. In this case, the owner and the buyer were given the same figures, he said. When it came to the reserve, the owner set the reserve at 750 and they were happy to take a bit at less if the amount fell short, he said. The day of the auction, there was a few interested parties and the auction dictated the value. I mean, that's just crazy. I mean, good on the buyer, uh, good on the seller. Good luck to them, eh? But damn. At the end of the day, my job is to get the most money I'm not going to tell buyers they're going above the reserve. Stop bidding. <laughs> yeah. Who thinks an agent is the side on the side of the buyer? Who, who even thinks that? I mean, how? That's that's shocked me more than anything. Being at an agent's mercy. Further afield in the Blue Mountains area, Joss Eldred, 28, and partner uh, Daniel, 31, finally purchased their dream home after an agonizing six-month search. He said several agents gave lower prices than the couple expected the property to sell for, although she could not prove it was underquoting. She singled out one property in Blacksland that sold uh, some months more for more than ninety thousand higher than the advertised price. Well, that's, is that underquoting or is that reality? Is that just the way the market's going? She said she could not prove it was underquoting, but was disappointed with the way the agent handled the sale. Come back and ask us, would you be willing to spend $90,000 extra on top of what we asked for is really inappropriate and unprofessional? Well, that's what, what do you think? If someone else comes and offers that, the agent's going to come back and see if you can match it. I mean, come on. The agents are definitely all doing it to an extent. They're really trying to push you up from your maximum limit and just try and squeeze out as much. Of, I mean, why is this a, is this a surprise to people? Is this a surprise? Do people understand what an agent's job is? They're not there to be touchy-feely nice for the buyer. They're there to make money for the seller. You know, they're not there to get you in your ideal home, to guide you on the pro. That's all bullshit, guys. What's going on? Is this real? Is, is this real? Are people this naive? 
As a fairly young couple with not a huge amount of money to spend, it feels like you're at their agent's mercy. She hopes government can offer more education to would-be buyers. Why is it that women always in these articles want the government to step in and be the saviour? Oh, come on. Come on. Bit of life experience. How old are they? 28 and 31. Not that young. Hitting 30. It would really be helpful to have an advisor, advisory service available, she said. Another government thing. Oh, come on. It's called the internet. It's called searching. Thinking, but... Yeah, no. <laughs> I can't believe this. I, I honestly... Is this, this is a troll article, isn't it? Come on, Nassim. You know, she's a good, good journalist, but seriously. Coming into this fresh face, not really understanding much about the market. We were naive about what to expect and how to deal with agents. Yes, yes, there you are. This is... This has been a lesson. This is called going through life and learning. Learning through mistakes, learning the hard way. It was only after mistakes and crappy experiences that we got a handle on it. Yes, that's, that's called life. That is called life. The government is not going to fix that. Government advisors are not going to take away this life lesson or the need for this life lesson from you. I can't believe this is the takeaway I'm getting from this article, that people are expecting the government to take care of them, or people are so naive, so naive to what real estate agents do. This is just, just ludicrous. Maybe, maybe this makes sense. Maybe this makes sense why this constant plugging in the media and the FOMO, maybe this is why it works. A spokesperson, a spokesman for Chapman Real Estate told ABC News they rejected and disputed any allegations of underquoting. The agent put down the $90,000 price difference to a, su a sudden surge in the bottom end of the market. Previously, sorry, previous to the property in question being placed on the market, there were very minimal comparable house sales at the lower end, the agent said. The listing agent and home seller were fully prepared to sell the home at the advertised price. Market provides. Here's, the, here's this other thing. In, in other videos, I am you know, was critical of China and people are talking about, oh, com they're bringing up the US and how horrible the US is. Here's just a question. You know, here's an example showing you how the market will tell you the reality. Okay? Which country, China or the United States, are people trying to do everything they can to get into? Okay? Just which one? Think about that. Put everything else aside. So, the case of Melbourne pro property prices are also on the rise. The case of property selling well above their reserve is also becoming more common in Melbourne, where property prices have also picked up in recent months. According to CoreLogic, Melbourne property prices lifted 2.2% in November. Ellen Sarv, 27, and partner Nathan have also been looking for a property for more than six months. Ms. Suave also believes most agents are underquoting, but can defend it by saying it is just a function of Melbourne's market picking up again. She gave the example of a three-bedroom house at 25 uh, Rhonda Street, Avalon Heights. She said the property was advertised 600 to 660 but sold for 780 Bill Carp and uh, Barry Plant Mooney Valley, or from Barry Plant Mooney Valley, who saw that property, said the market had rapidly picked up since the federal election. He said the reserve price on auction day was 660 It went well above where the market expected it to go, he said. That's the free forces of an auction. It's happening everywhere at the moment. Well, not everywhere. It's not happening everywhere. It's happening in select locations. He said a three-bedroom home in 13 Arbor Terrace, Avalon Heights, was advertised at around 860, ended up selling an auction for 1.04. You can't control these things. I've done this selling home for 36 years, and there'll never be a science as to what people pay. But Miss uh, Savan, or Sava? Sava, is that it? Thinks... All agents quote lower than what they think a property will sell for in order to build a crowd on the day and in the moment get people who are a bit higher. Well, that's not underquoting. If they agree to that with the with the seller, that's perfectly fine. You spend all this time looking, you get lawyers to review contracts, you leave work early to get to auctions only to find people a lot older than you are buying for their kids. Well tips for buyers, look for sales results, not agents' estimates. Amanda Hahn and partner Alistair34, who have also been in the market looking to buy a home for the past six months. 
Ms. Hahn said she's extremely frustrated at what she believes is real estate agents underquoting, but that she's not been able to prove it. She gives one example at Smith Street, Thornbury, which was advertised for 550 to 600, sold at auction for 755. But she said it was not just one agent that advertised at prices far lower than it eventually sold for. We've been to multiple auctions and house viewings and have missed out on a number of houses due to underquoting, she said. Can you prove it? Can you prove the underquoting? Melissa Morgan says she and her husband have been looking to purchase a unit in the eastern suburbs of Melbourne for the past four months. I'd be careful about a unit there. <laughs> I'd be careful about any unit. We quickly learned that properties listed in our budget usually went well over, she said. Our first auction had a price grade of 550 to 600. Budget was 600 and property sold for 723. We were absolutely gutted. Miss Borgen said it is frustrating to be constantly misled about the true value of a property and a requirement for real estate agents to list similar properties doesn't seem very effective. After a few experiences like that, we learned to look for properties that were listed well below our budget, she said. Agents cherry-pick results to make houses seem like it could honestly go for less, she added. Really? Her advice is do your own research based on sales prices rather than relying on meaningless agent guides. Well, yeah, do your own research. My biggest tip to would-be buyers is to ignore the for sale price and look at the sold results over the past three months. It's a far better indicator, Miss Morgan said. Well, everyone, I think this is just showing us how naive a lot of people are out there and how many people seem to think real estate agents are there to help buyers and first-home buyers. It, yeah, and calling, calling for government to find a solution again. Anyway, guys, let me know what, you're think, what you all think, what your take on this is. This has gotten me surprisingly annoyed. <laughs> surprisingly. But, yeah, let me know your opinion. Please uh, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you want to help us produce more, we have a Patreon where we can, you can make a small monthly donation. We have affiliate links with Amazon, eBay, and Independent Reserve. And we also sell our very own handmade pocket squares at the Heiser Says blog. Take care, guys. Have a great day, and I will talk to you later. Bye for now.